Hello and uh, welcome to the next uh, lab session on the optical spectroscopy and microscopy course. Um, we uh, saw so far about how to align the laser, how to get the laser light into the fiber optic um, uh, device or a fiber, uh, actually an optical fiber. Uh, now in during that time I had actually uh, told you that we would replace that fiber optic with a um, um, uh, fluorescent solution to with the hope of showing you a small um, home built uh, fluorescent spectrometer right uh, la uh, laser induced uh, fluorescent spectrometer and uh, let's go ahead and see how we actually do that um, now just a quick recap the light source we have uh, three light sources three laser diodes we are operating only the one uh, for 17 nanometer and that blue light is uh, coming through here, hitting this mirror, hitting this mirror and uh, one extra part that we have kept here which is the uh, neutral density filter. Actually it uh, reduces the intensity um, so that it is in a um, uh, range that it is uh, uh, good enough for us to actually de uh, detect and see things and this until here there is no change at all and of uh, even here there is not much change. What we have is a two lens system to actually um, uh, expand the beam all right so we have seen this um, in the morning uh, except now in the morning what we had was that another lens focusing onto an optical fiber now we have taken off that lens instead we have a new optical element coming here now this new optical element is a dichroic mirror okay um, in the dichroic mirror again we have seen it in the class so it has a special property we also uh, talked about it in the morning when we are talking about the laser source there all right uh, where i told you that the first laser uh, this laser th these mirrors have a special property of transmitting this color while reflecting uh, this laser color and this laser color similarly now i, I have here used a dichroic which will which is going to reflect the blue laser that for um, uh, 70 nanometer laser and that laser light can be focused using a lens we will come to that in a minute but uh, that the, uh, it is going to reflect the blue laser and transmit the um, red shifted right the stroke shifted green uh, fluorescence alright. So just to demonstrate that uh, let us uh, do this which is I have here a white light source right pretty much a white light it is a you can see that uh, white spot on the um, uh, card here right it is pretty white. Now what I am going to do is I am going to actually move it and then shine it on um, the dichroic. When I do that first thing you notice is that the color of the light that is actually transmitted right that is pretty orange right you, you so the orange color gets transmitted so the white light so it's uh, it's all white right nothing uh, it's only from here the uh, the transmitted light is orange so in the shadow of the dichroic you see that it is orange in color okay on the other hand if you actually look at the reflection okay the way you do the ref, way, the way i do the reflection is now now uh, what i have done is that i have um, yeah. So now you can take a look at the blue light, uh, the card here. Now the reflection is blue, right? This is exactly what we want. We actually want the blue excitation light to be reflected uh, onto this pathway while the fluorescence, the yellow green fluorescence, to be uh, transmitted. So now uh, for us to generate the fluorescence, okay. Uh, what we need is that this light uh, coming out right so the the nature of the uh, light that is coming out is uh, 
collimated, right? Because we haven't put any lens here. So it's a parallel beam of light that is entering into this objective. Okay, this is an objective lens and uh, we have seen this in the class, right? Um, in order to know about the objective lens, what we need is we need to look at these uh, scriptures that are written here, okay? And uh, uh, unfortunately, you have to take it from me. Uh, it's 10x.25 uh, numerical aperture and air objective. So what's going to happen is that it's going to uh, f start focusing the light. Now, so what we saw, what we saw was that the thin beam of light, uh, thin uh, going backward and forward. Uh, a few things to notice there. One is that the thin beam is not a spot, but it has a length um, when you are seeing it from the other direction, right? In the z direction, right? The direction orthogonal to the um, propagation. If you see, you see that the thin uh, thin beam stays thin for over a longer uh, period of time, and that's our Rayleigh range we have seen in the class too. Now, um, what we uh, what we have created is the fluorescence uh, coming out from um, the fluorescein solution, which is excited by this objective lens. The same objective lens collects back this fluorescence, we should, and then becomes collimated, travels through this dichroic. Remember, this dichroic transmits the greenish yellow light, right? And um, if it, it transmits the greenish yellow light, you have a lens here. This is the same lens that we had it in the morning here, all right? Now that, uh, that lens uh, is about 35 mm lens. So if you actually look at, uh, you place a um, beam um, spec, I mean, going to increase the uh, power, laser intensity. And if you actually place a card, you can actually start to see um, that the beam is now um, the fluorescence beam is actually showing it's in a green. In fact, if you um, if I if you uh, do it there, that's actually the back. We are getting the image of the back aperture of the objective because this is a face objective. You can actually see the face ring. So I'm actually moving it. So now this is the actual focus of the fluorescent solution. This is the image of the fluorescent solution. I go back. As I go back, what I'm actually seeing is the image of the back aperture of the objective. Now, uh, that back aperture is uniformly illuminated. We have seen such kind of illumination before, right? Where in the course, we were talking about uh, color illumination. It's, the principle is exactly the same. So if you, if you were to image this onto your sample, you get a uniform illumination except in the color illumination instead of fluorescence you have a um, incandescent lamp here what we have is a fluorescent um, sample generating enough fluorescence illuminating the back aperture of the objective okay you can see nicely coming in focus okay good so now that's good just the color of it tells you it is fluorescent but then um, we are uh, when I'm when you are talking about a spectrum, we are actually looking for uh, a spectrometer. We are actually looking for a spectrum, right? A spectrum wherein different intensities come in at different spatial distances, right? As a function of spatial distance, you see the um, wavelength being different. So now, um, in order to do that, there are uh, quite a few things that you can do. One is by putting in a prism and then disperse it or using a grating. And um, uh, it, we are going to use a grating. And um, this is a special kind of a grating. It's called as a reflection grating. So unlike a transmission grating where you will see the gra grating structure uh, in the transmission, what you will see here is that in reflection. Uh, the the um, the diffraction pattern. So uh, let me uh, introduce the grating and then show you how it really works as a grating. The way to look at that is um, we know that the 488 nanometer light, right, or 470 nanometer light, this blue light um, that we are seeing um, is pretty uh, monochromatic. So now what we are going to do is that 
we are going to put that onto the grating and then look at the reflection from the grating uh, there I will show you the zeroth order which doesn't deviate at all which obeys just like if the grating were to be a um, plane mirror wherever the uh, light would have gone that uh, it follows the same path you will also see in addition to that uh, first order second order and so on um, this particular grating is uh, specifically um, glazed and uh, tuned for 500 nanometer light um, but uh, let's try to see I mean uh, the, the first order intensity will be maximum there but let's try to see here anyway um, how we uh, how it behaves with the um, 470 nanometer light okay uh, from here uh, the light entering through the objective starts to focus and you can actually see the wider beam uh, towards this end of the objective becoming thinner and becoming uh, and then later becoming wider again now how do I know that uh, it's actually the focus uh, you can actually move the relative distance between the uh, objective lens that is this and the cuvette now if the fo uh, if it is the focus what you are doing is you are taking it when you take the objective lens back you are taking that thin beam closer towards that wall all right and okay so now uh, what i have done is i have placed this grating di diffraction grating reflection grating on the path of the laser beam usually if it is a mirror you would uh, expect to see just that spot okay nothing else uh, however what you see now is uh, um, um, the first orders on both the sides so you uh, um, so you can see that they are slightly more intense than the uh, center beam and um, you will see this uh, very nicely and distinctly when uh, we look at not the monochromatic light but like the laser but actually the multicolor light like a fluorescence uh, when we do that what we see is that uh, we will be able to separate the fluorescence that is uh, originating from the solution in um, we will be able to separate them into multiple uh, different um, uh, wavelengths okay so now let's uh, go ahead and uh, let the beam inside and I'm going to move the uh, grating away from the beam so now we can actually see this uh, fluorescence nicely all right and uh, in fact um, so that's our uh, focus spot okay now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to place the uh, this opt um, the reflection grating i'm going to come jump onto the other side and then place the reflection grating right here and then show you from uh, uh, the reflection that there is a beautiful uh, spectrum okay so okay so now uh, we have kept the so we see the incident beam goes through nicely and then uh, there is a dichroic and we have the fluorescence now that's falling on the uh, grating now the when you see the grating the first order right um, so right there you see that green uh, that's the first order that's focal spot this is exactly what we saw in this direction now we don't see it because it's a reflection grating so it's reflecting there and in fact um, uh, now if you see you can actually get the um, back the image of the back aperture right and this is now we if you remember what happened with the blue light was that uh, this light displaced in angle was the, the first order and if you look at the displaced angle so if you uh, if you actually look at this now you see this beautiful uh, spectrum uh, red on the right and left you have the uh, uh, green and now I'm all I'm doing is I'm just rotating back to get the first order so that um, you, you could think of having a wider paper like that if I keep it like this you can see I'm capturing both the first order as well as the uh, uh, zeroth order in in on the same paper um, so and then the uh, uh, what you're seeing is the resolved spectrum now this can be captured onto the CCD camera or you can actually put in a slit assembly and move the slit um, and then measure the intensity throughput 
as a function of space. So imagine this being one of the slit blade and all that you are doing is you are just moving it across and measuring the total intensity. Now that uh, should give you the amount of light as a function of uh, different wavelength. So now that's um, the simplest spectrometer that you can think of, the emission spectrometer that you can think of, um, laser of the uh, laser induced fluorescence that you can think of. Um, then um, what we have actually done is that uh, um, we have done this in the lab in a completely open setup and be able to show you that it's very simple and uh, um, easy to follow. Okay. Now this is done through one photon excitation. That's why you see this um, fluorescence as a big streak. In fact, if you see it from this side, um, it's uh, nicely um, uh, on uh, one little spot um, which is wider, but on the other side you can see it as a streak of line. And uh, later we will see if we do the same thing in a two photon, it's a very, very sharp and uh, localized uh, fluorescence. On top of it, um, you will see that it has some characteristic feature that requires the laser to be pulsed. Okay, These two things we will see in the forthcoming classes. All right, thank you.